again this time around to be able to share with you the word of God this Sunday. It's a long time since we stopped meeting at church but I want to believe that we are all adapting that the spirit of God is leading us because whatever the situation may be the spirit of God is always there. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is a teacher so I want to believe that to all of us, the Holy Spirit is teaching us new ways that we are able to interact with our God, we are able to fellowship with one another, we are able to interact and even pray together. But we, of course, we thank God that we are drawing near to that place where we'll be able to go to church again Maybe we will not have as much liberty as we may have wanted, but there is always a place to start. And we are going to appreciate the Lord for that starting point, believing that as we go on, things will be better and better. My names are Reverend Peter Gaya, uh, coming to you from Redeemed Gospel Church, Ruiru. Today I want to talk on a topic that I'm calling the peace that Christ gives. My message will be actually focused on the book of John, which is a very interesting book, the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John is known as a Gospel of Belief because it is a Gospel that was written with the aim of people believing that Jesus is the Son of God. 
as we begin this topic of peace, I want to say that in my own way of looking at it, peace is a state of well-being. Peace is a state of well-being, a state of wholeness, a state of confidence, and a state of assurance. Uh, peace is disturbed when things are not working and when challenges overwhelm us. In the Gospel of John, there are two places that Jesus talks about his peace. We are going to look at those two scriptures. The first one will come from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, and verse 27. Gospel of John, uh, chapter 14, and we are reading from verse 27. This is what Jesus says. Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And then our second reading is coming from the Gospel of John, chapter 16 and verse 33, which says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. I believe that the topic of peace is necessary for us right now, uh, that the whole world is going through difficulties. But of course we are aware that this may not even be the end of such difficulties. Knowing that we are within the end times, we know that things will be tougher and tougher. And this is where now Jesus talks about his peace and tells us that he gives us his peace. Jesus talks about his peace because he knew the challenges that his disciples would face. Indeed, we live in a world that is full of challenges. He says he does not give his peace as the world gives because the peace that the world gives is uncertain, it is undependable, and it is short-lived. He urges the believers not to let their hearts be troubled. He urges the believers not to let their hearts be troubled or not even to be afraid. He tells them to take heart because he has overcome the world. Brothers and sisters, the peace that Jesus gives is anchored on his person and capacity as given in the narrative of the Gospel of John. Jesus makes very powerful statements about his person in the Gospel of John. Statements that invoke peace on those who decide to believe in him. In the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus says that he is the bread of life. This is a very powerful statement. It means that Jesus gives life. In other words, his bread, he, he gives satisfaction and contentment. A person who will believe in him and interact with him he is saying he is the bread of life. In other words, he brings satisfaction and contentment. And in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 12, he makes another statement, another powerful statement. He states that he is the light of the world. He is the light of the world that drives away darkness from people's lives, giving them the light of life and causing them to have understanding and certainty in life. But that's not the end. When you read the book of John, the Gospel of John, you find other statements still, like in, in chapter 10, verse 11 to 14. He says that he's the good shepherd. He's the good shepherd who lays down his life to protect his sheep making them not to be afraid of whatever, whatever enemies that may come. Brothers and sisters, all these statements are meant to 
help us to be reassured, to have certainty, and not to have worry. In the, in the same Gospel of John, chapter 11, verse 25 up to 26, Jesus also talks about the fact that he is the resurrection and the life. He made this statement at the time when he had heard that Lazarus was dead. And when he went to visit with them during uh, the time that they were mourning their brother, Martha and Mary asked him why he did not come before. But he told them that is the resurrection. He actually gave them hope. In spite of the fact that they had lost their brother, Jesus brought in the picture that their brother can live. Of course, they were thinking that he, could be, he would be raised at the last day when the Lord comes back. But he says, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. Even at that particular time, as he stood there, the Lord was the resurrection. And we all know the end of the story, that indeed, Lazarus, who had stayed in the grave for four days, came back to life. He came back to life. He rose again. He was able to come back and live the way he used to live. So Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He has capacity not only to bring back to life what is dead, but to sustain the living so that they are not able to die. Personally, to me, I feel this is a very powerful statement. It is a, power, a powerful statement that gives hope. You may be in a situation where things have collapsed, things have died, things have succumbed to whatever it is. But with Jesus, we can say that things can come back to life, things can revive, whether it is your business, whatever it is, whether it is your health, we have this Lord Jesus Christ who states that is the resurrection and the life. And then, of course, in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6 up to 7, he states another, he makes another statement, and he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Because as he was sharing with his disciples, and he was, as he was talking about going back to the Father, the disciples wanted to know, where is the Father? They wanted to know, where is the way? And this is where Jesus told them that is the way, the truth, and the life. And of course, these three things are very important things. The way, because people at times don't know the way. Right now, we are all struggling with COVID, and we are all wondering, how will, how will we get the vaccine? How will we get the treatment? In other words, we are all looking for a way that we can be able to overcome our challenge. And the Lord here is saying, he's the way. But he's not only the way, he's the truth. In this world where there is a lot of lies, a lot of deceit, a lot of things that at, at times you cannot even understand, we have the Lord speaking and saying that indeed he is the truth and indeed he is, is the life. He is the only means to reach and to know the Father, the Father who is the life source of everything. He says you cannot even know the Father, you cannot come to the Father except through me because I am the way. I really believe that as creatures of God and as humans, that connecting with the Father is the greatest thing that can happen to us. And Jesus here is putting it very clearly that indeed he is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by him. So my brothers and sisters, this is just one aspect where the peace of Christ is able to come to us. When we are able to know him 
through these statements that he's making, then there is no need to be afraid. Why should we be afraid when is the bread of life? Why should we be afraid when is the light of the world? Why should we be afraid when is the good shepherd who is ready to lay his life for us even if we find ourselves in danger? In the Gospel of John, he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you like people who have nobody to take care of. He's giving us a guarantee that he will be with us. And he tells us he's the resurrection and the life. And he tells us he's the way, the truth, and the life. So my brothers, I want to put it to us that one of the ways that the peace of Christ is anchored is in his person in what he, he, he says he is. But there is a second, a second aspect to this thing. The other basis for peace that Jesus gives is seen in the works, his works as narrated in the Gospel of John. In the Gospel of John, we have seven miraculous signs specifically written to, to inspire belief in the Savior. Number one, Jesus turned water into wine during a wedding at Cana in Galilee and he showed that he's the master of quality. The people who drew the water and took it to the master of ceremony, when the master of ceremony tested, he found that the quality of that wine was much superior than the wine that they had taken before. Jesus is the master of quality. We also see that Jesus healed the son of a royal official who was far away. In fact, if you read the Gospel of John chapter 4, verse 46 up to 54, when Jesus went back to Cana, this royal official came and said, my son is sick, come and heal him. His son was at Capernaum, quite a distance away from Cana. And Jesus told him, just go home you will find yourself healed. And indeed, when this royal official went back home, he found his son healed. So Jesus is the master of distance. It doesn't matter how far you are. All he needs to say is speak the word. If he's able to speak the word regarding your situation, distance does not matter. Jesus is the master of distance. But we also see that Jesus is the master of time. We, we read about the invalid, the man who was invalid, who was at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. That man had stayed there for 38 years. The Bible says that those who are sick and unwell used to dip themselves into that pool and they would get well. But this man did not have the strength, neither did he have somebody to help them. But it only took Jesus to be there to ask him, do you want to be well? Do you want to be made whole? And my brothers and sisters, a sickness of 38 years was terminated. This man was able to stand up, he was able to pick up his mat, and he was able to go. So Jesus is the master of time. This is what we see in this particular sign. We also see that Jesus is also the master of quantity. Because one time when he was ministering to people at a particular place, he could detect that they were hungry. They had been listening to him for a long time. And he told his disciples, it is our duty to feed these people. But his disciples actually were saying they don't have money that can even buy food enough for these people. But one of them reported that there was a young boy there who had five loaves and two fish. And it is these five loaves and two fish that Jesus was able to multiply to such an extent that over 5,000 people ate the, the, the food. And then after eating, 12 baskets uh, were picked of the pieces that had fallen down. Jesus 
is the master of quantities. But Jesus is also the master of natural laws. Because after feeding the 5,000, when his disciples had gone with the boat in the sea, he came walking on the water. Something that is not really possible when we think about natural law. But Jesus came walking on the water. Of course, the disciples thought he was a ghost, but he told them it is him that they should not be afraid. So he walked miraculously on water. But Jesus is not only that. He's also the master of misfortune. In the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verse 12, verse 1 up to 12, we talk about, we see the story of this man who was born blind. He was born blind, and when the disciples of Jesus saw him, they were asking Jesus, why was this man born blind? Is it because of the sin of his parents? But Jesus told them, no, it is not because of his sins, it is not because of the sins of his parents, but it is so, so that the works of God may be demonstrated in him. And we all know that at the end of the day, Jesus healed that man so that he was able to see again. On top of these brothers and sisters, Jesus is also the master of death. And this, of course, we see in the story of Lazarus. Because Lazarus became sick. But his sisters and Lazarus himself, they were friends of Jesus. And they sent word early enough for Jesus to come so that he may heal Lazarus. But there was a delay. And by the time Jesus came, Lazarus had la laid dead for four days. And the, what a dramatic thing. Jesus coming. Jesus talking to these people and telling them it's the resurrection and the life. Jesus going to the graveside and commanding the dead man Lazarus to come back to life. And indeed, Lazarus came back to life. His blood was able to move again. His heart was able to, to pump again. His lungs were filled with air again. It is something that you cannot properly explain by biologically. So Jesus is the master of death. The person of Christ and his capacity should be the basis of our peace. It makes no sense for one to be anxious or afraid when they have such a wonderful master in their life. If Jesus becomes master in your life, then you do not need to be afraid. You may receive the peace that comes from this master. As the bread of life, you have lasting satisfaction in him. As the light of life, he dispels darkness from your path. As the good shepherd, he guarantees you full protection. As the resurrection and the life, you stay alive in him. As the way, the truth, and the life, he connects you to the Father. He's the master of quality. He's the master of distance. He's the master of time. He's the master of quantity. He's the master of natural law. He's the master of misfortune and is the master of death. In him, your peace is guaranteed, regardless of the challenges that they may come your way. He acknowledges that there is trouble in the world, but he says, take heart. In that verse that we read in the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 33, he says, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. As you sit in your homes and uh, wherever you are, as you ponder the things that are going on around the world, not only in Kenya, but in other nations, the US, China, Russia, wherever, of course there is that tendency that you may feel afraid. But as I've said through this message, and through the narrative of the Gospel of John, Jesus wants us to be reassured. He wants us to have confidence. He wants us to have peace that comes from him. And he, as I've said, he's bringing this out 
by the statements that he makes about himself. And this is also brought out by the signs that are recorded that Jesus did. All these are expected to invoke uh, inspiration for us to know that with Jesus Christ, we are safe because it is that safety uh, that gives us peace. I want to believe that this message that comes from the Gospel of John will be meaningful to you and that if you are worried and anxious, knowing who Jesus is and what he's capable to do, you will be peaceful and you will know that in his presence, under his wings, under his cover, you are protected and that you'll be safe. If it is a question of health, he can heal you. If it is a question of food, he can provide. Uh, whatever may be the situation in your life, the Lord is all sufficient. Look up to him. Look up to him. Take him at his word, the way this royal official did, and you will see that his word will be accomplished in your life. May the Lord bless you, even as we pray. Uh, the Bible tells us that those who wait upon the Lord they are going to mount up with wings like of an eagle. Young men may get tired, but those who wait for upon the Lord will keep on moving. I want to pray and I want to believe that you will keep on moving through the strength that the Lord gives. Let's pray and uh, submit ourselves before him. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for being our master. You are our master in every situation. It doesn't matter whether it is time, whether it is quantity, whether it is death, whether it is quality, whether it is distance. You are master. We submit to you. I commit your people into your hand. I pray, Lord, that your word will find place in their heart and that whatever anxiety may be afflicting them, that it will be overcome. Extend your hand and give healing. Extend your hand and provide. Extend your hand and manifest your cap capability in the life of your people. Father, we thank you because we know that you do much more than we think or even ask for. Because we pray all this in your mighty name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.